Hey pilots, welcome back. Have a replay review for you today. Uh, Hunter, F-22 Hunter playing the TA-152, which is a sniper plane when fully upgraded. An interesting deviation from the Falk Wolf 190 line that of course eventually becomes the BVP line. It's a little bit of a strange line altogether, isn't it? That you start as multi-rolls and then you have your choice to Head into multi rolls that aren't really multi rolls, but then at tier 10 become a multi roll again, um, and uh, or a sniper plane that becomes kind of subpar light fighters after that. So really strange. Anyway, I mostly ground out the TA 152 um, in my time in 1.x, 1.9, whatever it was. So I haven't spent I didn't spend a lot of time with this as a sniper plane, and I'm not a sniper expert. But I know the first thing I was going to say about this video right off the bat, which is I don't go head to head in my sniper planes. Um, one of the big things about sniper cannons is they do incredible damage. You know, the alpha on them is amazing. And you'd think with the high auto aim that they would be, you know, really good in a head on. But the reality is they're just very inconsistent. Um, and that especially goes for the TA-152 where uh, a couple of the guns have auto aim different. The auto aim stats are different on the central gun versus the wing guns. And uh, that can be problematic. And you see right here, it resulted in a RAM uh, that cost Hunter most of his HP. So I generally do not take head-ons in this. Um, because of that, we're going to get off to a slow start here, and the bots are going to knock us down. So while he's uh, respawning, um, you know, this is a, a replay from the previous version, so I don't have full access to the stats on it. I believe it was a 2v2. We'll take a look at that when we get, get to it. I do think I paused somewhere in here to, to check that out. Um, and we can see Seahawk is, is rolling. I've never, I didn't think about turning my uh, J21 into a Soviet premium. I've got mine set as an American one since um, the Americans, up until the release of the Corsair, did not have a higher tier um, multi-role premium. So that's interesting. I have to think about that. Anyway, we're back at it and um, diving down to take on some of these guys. Those deflection shots are also really hard with sniper planes, um, especially at this range, at the 200, right? Just dialing them in is a little tough, and uh, fortunately, he's able to do it. So I also want to say there's something odd. I don't know if it was because of the replay or the mods or what, but when the guns start to overheat, you can see a little bit of a grid behind the behind the the uh, reticle there, which is fascinating. Keep an eye out for it. It was a little odd. Uh, there we go. So um, very quickly, let's back this up so we can see what we're dealing with. Okay, so TA-152 and the J-21, yeah, 2v2. On the other side, an F2G and an, a Focke Wolf 190D. So, um, and it looks like the F2G is specialized. Neither one of these on this team are, though. And of course, we're dealing with airfields and the rocket base in the middle as well. And we have climbed to a two to one lead right now. There's the F2G chasing the Focke Wolf, uh, excuse me, the J21. So this is the second thing I was gonna comment on in this video. Seahawk is already dead at this point. It doesn't look like it, but, but Seahawk is dead. So um, I'm not sure engaging the F2 was the right way to go. I think I would have just burned directly to the airfield. Um, we got some good hits in without a doubt. And the TA is more maneuverable than most people give it credit for, um, give credit to it for. But at this point, I would just leave. Um, I would head to that airfield, uh, go ahead and flip the zone and really put the pressure on. Uh, but Hunter's going to flip over and take another head on. And uh, this one is going to be even more dicey because the F2G has rockets attached. And you're going to see one go whizzing by right there. Two of them go whizzing by right there. Very fortunate. Those rockets were launched a little too uh, under shorter range. Um, I think the rule of thumb is usually you wanna, and they, wanna, they explode around 1,000 or 1,200 meters. I think is the max range. And that's usually what you want to queue them up for. Fortunately, in that case, no ram, and that uh, didn't cost us, but um, I think I would have just dove down and popped one or two of these guys along the way and dragged the F2 around um, so that he was not able to do anything else. Again, you can see the inconsistency of these cannons. Um, they're just especially close in. They're a little harder. I think if I were going to fly it this way, um, I would probably just revert back to the 30 and the 20s on it. Um, you can put the uh, hub gun, you can basically turn it into a 109G. Um, 
with the um, or the two, I guess the 209, I should say, at tier eight here, with the 30 hub gun, and you can do it sniper or the kind of stub gun, the shorter range 30 that the G has, uh, although it's a little better stats, I believe, um, and then 20s in the uh, wing roots there. So, and that is one way to play it. You know, you don't necessarily have to roll this out as a sniper plane if you're not very good with sniper cannons. You know, and presumably, you know, if you like sniper cannons, you're not going down this line anyway, right? You're, you're going to go down one of the lines that actually involves sniper cannons top to bottom, like the Yak-7, uh, Yak-9 SU line that comes, uh, comes about in the Soviet tree. So just a thought there. Um, this is the more of the more that you want to be doing, right, in terms of the long range sniping and uh, this is where i'm not very good and you can see hunter struggling too it's just hard to dial dial the guns in you kind of need a little bit of uh, help and just looking at this he does have um, the gun sight on but again with guns like this the accuracy is already really good the really the only thing that can help in a plane like this is is upping that auto aim um, and that's that can become really significant so this might be a plane if i were grinding it from scratch now where I would put um, a tier eight, either a, a G suit or nav equipment, probably nav equipment on and go ahead and improve it. It'll cost me a token to um, take it off later, um, but that would let me go ahead and uh, um, get the um, bonus to auto aim, which can be done in an improved state on the G suit and on the navigational equipment, but cannot be done in an improved state with the gun sight, um, which is why I sometimes don't use that when I'm grinding the 162. I haven't been doing that using the the uh, G-suit on it and then the nav equipment on other stuff as well. So we got the broadside here. That's the easiest way to get to it is those cannons to be on the broadside of something. And um, this has been no contest at all so far, right? Just uh, there's no way for the enemy to uh, be winning this right now with the way they're playing. The best thing they could have done in this case with two multi-rolls is work those edges and just cap, 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 separating cap. Um, and they'd have to work hard because they've got to counter the J21. But as you saw, the F2G was able to do that previously. And we're going to get into another diving attack situation here, another head-on here. First one lands, second one lands. So this was the best, right? That's the best thing you could hope for was that. But, of course, the Fock Wolf 190 is also here. And now we're in trouble. Um... Fortunately, we've got enough speed built up from the dive. The 190 is not catching us. Um, unfortunately, there's any aircraft guns and we're in an enemy zone, right? <laughs> so <clears throat> this, is, um, this is a good point for the other team to try and take back the initiative, right? Go cap some of those zones. Um, and that is something I will say probably cost them the match here. And I've run across this in the official channels. You remember a couple of videos ago I said, Maybe hey, ducking in those official channels, saying hi, what's up, checking it out. And I've run across two players recently, uh, both of whom seem to be unaware that you win games by capturing zones. This is part of the confusion I talk about all the time with new players, right? Uh, they just don't understand how the game works. And that can extend even to veteran players not understanding just how incredibly important it is to cap. So, again, hard to get those guns in. There we go. That was pretty good for, for close range. Um, I, anybody else hate the model? Uh, the TA-152H with those long wings, which is fascinating because, you know, in, in World of Warplanes, putting the longer wings, putting the H on makes the plane more maneuverable. I don't think that was true in real life. This was a, a high altitude uh, variation, right? And the long wings were, were for that purpose. Uh, they weren't to make it a better turn fighter. Uh, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's the case. Uh, but it just looks ridiculous. It's the, um, it's a sad looking plane at the end of the day. So, uh, but uh, if you like snipers, hey, this is the only one with three, three of those snipers, which makes it a very unique aircraft at the end of the day. If that's something you can enjoy playing with, as you can see, we're just on kind of mop up duty at this point. Um, the other team put up a little bit of a fight, but again, they needed to be capping much more significantly. As much as anything, um, this this match is, was for me uh, about that idea of the fact that you desperately need to be capping all the time, right? Um, otherwise, you're just going to get eaten alive. So 14 planes knocked down, 
uh, two sectors captured, 275 capture points, and of course a winged legend for crossing the 14,000 mark. So a very solid outing here for sure. Um, and the other team, of course, as you can see here, just didn't didn't cap a lot. I think at the end of the day, um, the personal points are mid range, and that's uh, and there's not a lot of that grade grade fighter, right? Which one of the multi role grades is, of course. Uh, doing the zone captures. So there is the TA152 for you and that replay. You know, my advice on this one is again, you know, if, if you want to try out sniper planes, it'd probably be good to give this a shot. Uh, for most people, it's probably not worth climbing after this in the tree um, just because the other two that come after it are a little subpar in terms of the meta. I enjoy them. I'm a big fan of the Focke Wolf 252. Uh, but it's not a good plane. I'll be the first to admit that. And y'all know I, I enjoy planes that are a little suboptimal. But if you want to try out sniper play without actually barreling down a line, this is a good place for it. Although you, you know, honestly could do that at lower tiers much easier. But if you really enjoy the sniper experience, the TA-152 does give you something unique in that it's got the triple sniper cannons, even more so than the TU-1 currently on Marathon with its double sniper cannons. So uh, some fun gameplay to be had if you are a fan of snipers and uh, some lessons to be learned in this match for sure. And again, my two cents would be uh, don't take head-ons. It's just they're great, but they're, they're inconsistent. And that inconsistency can get you in trouble. Um, especially against something that is far more consistent in a head-on, you know, something with 420s or 6, 650 cals, you know, that sort of thing. And this is sort of the oddball thing about uh, World of Warplanes is that cannons in general, um, although they have bigger alpha, are, you know, somewhat less consistent than machine guns um, and the lighter cannons. And uh, that can be a problem if you don't have them dialed in. And so uh, skill definitely plays a part in this, but so does RNG a little bit. If you are playing this, again, rather than um, the gun sight, you can see in the bottom right corner is gun sight, uh, lightweight power plant, lightweight wing frame. Don't have a problem with that. This is certainly a plane that benefits from having a little bit extra wiggle in it uh, for sure. But I would probably drop the gun sight, put on the nav equipment and go ahead and improve it uh, for the cost of a couple of credits and a token. Uh, that improves the auto aim on your big sniper cannons and that just helps it really does on top of that if you've got a pilot with marksman 2 to also double down on that auto aim increase i think that would help as well it's certainly something i would keep in mind with this uh, i don't know what it looks like when specialized i haven't taken the time to do that obviously um, but um, it's uh, it's certainly an interesting plane and maybe worth your time or maybe one that you've watched this video and gone man i'm avoiding that like the plague but in any case, an interesting uh, interesting plane and some interesting tactics with it. Thanks to Hunter for sending that in. Uh, if you have replays you'd like for me to take a look at or a plane you would like for me to fly, please let me know. I'm happy to do that for you. Um, I do have a couple of things for you in the next week. Um, we're going to try and take a look at that TU-1 with the marathon ongoing. And we are also going to enjoy for the first time... Uh, a video from that other game because I finally got some recording software working for that. So those of you who have requested it, uh, it's your dream is coming true. Well, uh, you'll get to see that next week. So have a great weekend. Good luck on the missions and on the TU1 Marathon. And uh, hope to see you in the skies.